Jan Martel was born on June 25, 1963, in Salamanca, Spain. His parents, Emile and Nicole Martel, were of French-Canadian descent. His father was a diplomat for the Canadian government. He spent most of his childhood in a variety of countries, such as Costa Rica, France, India, Iran, Mexico, Turkey, Canada, and the United States. From 1981 to 1984, Jan Martel first attended Trent University, and then in 1885, he went on to Concordia University. He majored in philosophy and graduated in 1985. After graduating, he worked many odd jobs, such as a librarian, tree planter, security guard, and a parking lot attendant, before he committed himself to writing. After he became committed to writing, he published his first book in 1993. Then soon he moved out to India. In India, he spent one and a half years visiting mosques, churches, temples, and zoos, and then he spent another two years studying zoology, religious texts, and castaway stories. While in India, he became inspired to write his second novel, Life of Pi. He had also wrote another magnificent novel called Beatrice and Virgil. Both books contained settings of the places he had visited throughout his life. Life of Pi is centered on the major themes of survival and identity, the beauty of animals, and three major religions, Islam, Hinduism, and Christianity. The novel begins with Pi, much older now, telling his story of the seven months at sea to an anonymous author. He tells the author that his story will make him believe in God. As a young boy, Pai was raised to be a Hindu, but he began exploring and had an interest in Christianity and Islam. He began practicing three religions at the same time, but his mother was very supportive of him and let him find his own way. His father owned a zoo, and Pai began to be very interested in animals. Times became tough in India, so Pai and his family decided to flee to Canada. Pai and his family leave to go to Canada, but their ship sinks and Pai's whole family dies. And all Pai is left with is a lifeboat and Richard Parker, a 450-pound Bengal tiger. During the seven months at sea, Pai and Richard Parker come across an island. Thinking that he was safe, he stayed on the island for a couple of nights, but then he soon realized that the island was not as it seemed. It was dangerous and that if he stayed on it any longer, he would die. But in the novel, Richie Parker and religion is what helped Pi the most throughout his journey. Yann Martel's second exquisite novel, Beatrice and Virgil, was published in 2010. It is about a writer named Henry who meets a taxidermist and is told a play about Beatrice and Virgil, a howler monkey and a donkey. Henry receives a letter from a taxidermist that says he needs his help writing his play. And because Henry had a lot of time on his hands, he went and visited the taxidermist. He would go back every day to have the taxidermist read little snippets of his play about Beatrice and Virgil. At first, Henry was very confused about the play, but little did he know that the animals were another representation of the Holocaust. The major theme in this novel was using animals for human conditions. Because of living in so many different countries, Jan Martel was able to put his experiences into both of his novels. Although Jan Martel had no personal connection to the Holocaust, he became very interested into learning about it because he moved to Germany and he became interested in visiting concentration camps and researching about the Holocaust and learning more about it. Both novels Life of Pi and Beatrice and Virgil had the reoccurring theme of the beauty of animals. The experiences Jan Martel encountered throughout his life were shown through in his novels. Social, political, and historical changes and his own life experiences impacted Jan Martel's themes throughout his novels, Life of Pi and Beatrice and Virgil. Jan Martel has written many exquisite novels inspired by his own life experiences, two of them being Beatrice and Virgil and Life of Pi. Jan Martel continues to travel and is currently working on new ideas for his eighth novel.